It's not that I set out to make a book about class. It's that I set out to make a book that people would respond to. And so if you want people to respond to something, there has to be elements of truth to it. Shabik Lubik is about a world where you can buy and sell wishes, and the more expensive a wish is, the more powerful its ability to grant your desire. So for example, if you buy a wish for a million dollars, it will give you exactly what you want. But if you buy a wish for 500 pounds, it's going to trick you like a monkey's paw. And the plot of the three books is that there's a man who has three first class wishes that he doesn't want to use or sell because he thinks they're religiously impermissible, haram. And because of his debts, he decides to sell them all at a huge discount. So the book is kind of split into three sections and each section is about who gets one of his discounted first class wishes. So the main character of Shubik Lubik is Shukri. He is the owner of the kiosk and he is a, sort of a very generous, but also sort of, um, I would say very traditional and, and, and kind of by the book person. And the three people um, he sells his wishes to are Aziza, who is a widow, and there is Noor, who is a university student studying wishes. And the main character of the third book is Shoeya, who is an old chain-smoking woman who hangs out at Shokri's kiosk. And uh, those are sort of the four main characters of the book. And then there's other characters that you'll meet throughout as well. Most wish stories are either about the genies or cautionary tales. They never deal directly with what people want. I think, you know, like the most famous wish story is Aladdin, who like wishes to, especially Disney's Aladdin, not the regular one. Um, but he wishes to, you know, become a prince. He wishes to, to get rich, things like that. And so I think when you deal with that, like you, you have to look at what Aladdin really wants and, and how that can be fulfilled in the story kind of goes through the vision of like when he gets it, it's not in the way he wants and it ruins everything. But what if he just really got rich? What if he just really lived like a prince? And he was just like, what, what would his life be like if it didn't have sort of, you know, implications of a story perspective? And so for me, I was just thinking of like, what do people want? Why, if, if people can wish for eternal wealth, if people can wish for luck, what would the world look like? Every time I meet someone, I ask, well, if you could buy a wish for a million dollars, and in this situation, you have a million dollars, what would you wish for? And usually people are like, well, if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't wish for anything. I'm like, that's the point, though, because you wouldn't wish for like a house, you wouldn't wish for a car, you wouldn't wish for anything you could buy. Um, and so most people I know, they're very spiritual. So a lot of them wish for things like, I, I would wish to go to heaven. I would wish for contentment. Um, and I think those are very good answers, and they're kind of addressed throughout the books. For me, actually, I would save my wish. I'm the kind of person who, who is worried about the future. So I would just save my wish in, in like the event of a disaster. I would use my wish then. So I would, I would think of it as like a, an in, not an investment, but I would think of it as an emergency wish. When I'm building a story, I'm not trying to address an issue. I'm just thinking, well, this world functions like this, so you must talk about that. Like, there is, there are wishes in this world and they're based on price, so you have to talk about class. You can't avoid it. But it's not that I set out to make a book about class. It's that I set out to make a book that people would respond to. And so if you want people to respond to something, there has to be elements of truth to it. It's not a book about the real world at all. It's kind of a book about how worlds can look and how how different things can can make small small situations can make very huge differences and create sorts of parallel histories and how someone might get really immersed in that i think for me actually i was concerned with the believability of my world more than anything i didn't want people to read it and think ah oh, this is a metaphor for the current situation because you know that's a i think that's that's like a a minimum thing, like every story is a metaphor for a situation. Every story can affect an issue. Every story has a moral of some sort or has a, a vision of some sort, if you look at it that way, if that's what you're looking for when you're reading a story. But I would hope people don't read my book 
hoping to solve real world issues or find solutions for real world issues. I hope they can just feel entertained and interested in the story itself.